What originated as a milk condensing company has now evolved into the most prevalent food company in the world today. Nestle, a Swiss transnational food and beverage company, was founded by German-born and Swiss confectioner Henry Nestle in 1866. In 2015, Nestle recorded a revenue of 90 billion Swiss franc, which is equivalent of 120 billion Canadian. Most of this income comes from the sales of water, chocolate, cereal, coffee, yogurt, and ice cream. There are currently 275,000 employees working directly for Nestle. The CEO of Nestle is Peter Brabrick Lemath, but more on him later. Although Nestle seems like your average food company, little did you know what goes on behind the scenes. Nestle has been involved in many social justice issues throughout the years. Some of the main issues Nestle has been involved with include the baby formula scandal in third world countries, the water fight in Guelph, Ontario, child slavery during the production of chocolate in the Ivory Coast, health issues associated with their food products all over the globe, Nestle's water pollution that exceeds the limit 2100 times in more than 830 locations, price fixing their chocolate in Canada and the United States, promoting healthy foods by mislabeling. Diving deeper into the water fight, Nestle is looking to buy a five acre lot in Middlebrook, Ontario. More importantly, buying this land would give Nestle access to a 110 meter deep well and the right to pump 1300 liters of water per minute. Nestle would resell the water to earn a huge profit. The issue here is that Guelph and the surrounding region is fed by the water that is pumped out of the ground in Middlebrook. The residents of the area are scared because if Nestle gets what they want, the Guelph region will fall into a drought, causing water to become more scarce. Therefore, water becomes more expensive to pay for. The Guelph water fight is similar to the water issue in California, which is also caused by Nestle. The Guelph water fight proves that Nestle is a company that is hungry for money and will make poor, unethical decisions as long as they walk away with money in their pockets. Nestle's action goes against the Catholic social teaching's theme of rights and responsibilities. Everyone has the right to human decency, and Nestle has committed a crime of injustice, creating a difficult challenge for the people of Guelph to obtain water, which should be a basic human right. Moving on to the child labor issue in the Ivory Coast. In 2001, Nestle faced criticism for buying cocoa from the Ivory Coast in Ghana, which may have been produced using child slaves. Hundreds of thousands of children in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Togo were being purchased from their unwealthy parents and shipped to the Ivory Coast to be sold as slaves to cocoa farms. Over a decade ago, Nestle promised to end the use of child labor in its supply chain. A decade later, they continue to use children under the age of 15 working at the cocoa farms connected to the Nestle chain. A recent study showed that after the visitation of over 260 cocoa farms in the Ivory Coast, they found 65 workers under the age of 18, 27 of which were under the age of 15. Nestle's unethical decisions defy the Catholic social teachings of dignity of work and the rights of workers. The labor is forced with no salary made by the worker. In this situation, the workers serve to help Nestle's overall growth to expand and serve the economy, rather than the economy serving the people. Nestle also goes against the Catholic social teachings theme of life and dignity of the human person by their display of neglect and carelessness towards the slaves who work to build their company. Workers are unable to attend school, they are exposed to hazardous work conditions and are forced to perform dangerous tasks. Workers are whipped, beaten and forced to work for at least 14 hours a day before they rest in a dark room with no windows.
Also, Nestle is involved with the baby formula scandal in third world countries. Throughout the 20th century, Nestle created a baby formula that is near identical to breast milk, or so they said. Women can feed their child Nestle's food instead of breastfeeding their child. Nestle advertised this product to be extremely healthy for babies and many young mothers bought Nestle's product to feed their children. Little did they know that Nestle's baby formula is in fact extremely harmful for their child. The formula requires to be mixed with water and in third world countries where water is very scarce, the formula is being mixed with polluted water and being fed to babies. UNICEF estimates that a formula-fed child living in disease-ridden and unhygienic conditions is between 6 and 25 times more likely to die of diarrhea and 4 more times more likely to die of pneumonia than a breastfed child. Nestle is aware that it is unsafe for third world mothers to be feeding their children their formula, but continue to advertise their product because Nestle is thirsty for money. These people are willing to support genocide, as long as they earn a profit, which is one of the most disgusting, unethical situations imaginable. This scenario goes against the Catholic social teaching themes of human dignity and global solidarity. In conclusion, Nestle has made some very irresponsible decisions that go against the Catholic social teachings because of their greed for money. Kids should grow up going to school and having fun with their friends, not working on cocoa farms. Nestle's injustices create major challenges for all humans. To overcome and defeat these challenges, humans must come together and defeat the corrupt company of Nestle. We can stand up together to make a change, a change will be made. I believe that I can make a change. I believe that I can make a change. I believe that I can make a change.